Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Hi. I didn't see you there. Probably the reflection of the light on my bald head. It occurs to me that we haven't opened a Generations toy yet on this show. You know, Generation is that thing we were all excited about in the early 2000s. And now we have Combiner Wars, and Siege, and Earth Wars, and everything else wars. So I thought we'd start with this. Boom. You know I get two of everything, one to open, one to keep sealed. I just haven't quite gotten around to opening one yet, so I thought I'd break these out. This one looks like it's going to stay sealed. It's a little nicer condition. There you go, buddy. So this is the 2006 Generations Toy Mirage. This version, this is a mail-away version, actually. This is a pretty rare version. Oh, rare. I use that word loosely. This was a mail-away version from 2009. This is the Electro Disruptor Mirage. Electro Disruptor Liegier, I think his name is. Sorry if I'm butchering that pronunciation. This was available as a mail away in 2009 from Takara Tomy if you purchased the 2009 Transformers Generations book. So, something of interest about this packaging is that this is meant, this card, you can technically slide it off, take the toy out, slide the card back on, and keep the package nice, and then slide the car off, put the toy back in, slide it, and it'll still look like the toy is in there, sealed, or displayed nicely. So, 2009, it's 2020. Yeah, I'm kind of late to the party opening this guy. So, I say we cut the tape. What I mean by this, look. See, you can cut the tape along here, slide this card off. All right, so I'm going to show you how we do that first there's the tape on the bottom now I said this was a mail away I believe this came in a white box I can't remember I think it came in a white box addressed to the person who got it which makes sense So let's see. So we've cut the tape on all three sides. These plastic lips are now loose. Can we pop it off without damaging? Oh, look at that. Oh, okay, so like, look, look. It's still sealed to the top of the card, right? But if we were to remove this, take it out we can put the toy back in later on and then try and resell it for more than what we would sell it for if the card was just you know just a card back so we have this this is important we're gonna keep this 2009 so 2009 this is still the metal twist ties all right this is the same card size and blister, or bubble. This is sometimes called a bubble. Sometimes it's called a blister. As the regular uh, Henkai Mirage figure from Generations. All right. So usually I would cut these, right? But to make a point, you know, if you just loosen these up a little bit, your figure will slide out. And you can save the packaging. 
do want to talk about this though for a little bit. There it is. Easy peasy. Not easy peasy. It should be easy peasy. There we go. We'll take that out. All right, we'll take that out too. All right, finally, we got it out. I'm going to take these twist ties and put them back into the corresponding holes. Get a little twist there. You know, today I opened a third-party toy and uh, left a bad taste in my mouth. I didn't like it. So I was looking around like, what do, what do I feel like opening today? I happened to find a bunch of uh, Earthrise toys or Earth Arrival toys. I'm like, you know what? It's Generations time. All right. So we're going to put the insert back in. There it is. Look, we got a nice package. Uh, I'm doing this with this one because this is the mail away, so it's just, you know, it's worth a little bit more. All right, so let's talk about, there is a card on the inside, but I wanna just uh, go over this with you guys. <clears throat> I miss the catalogs from, from G1. All right, this is uh, Takara Tomy Fans. This is, uh, give us your feedback. It's a little late now, so probably don't want my feedback. <clears throat> it's a great toy, though. Instructions. Uh, all in Japanese. Basically just says change, 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 finish. This is what I like. This is the catalog. Remember the old G1 catalogs? For our older viewers who are my age. G1 toys came with a catalog inside and you would open it up and it'd show you all the different transformers. So if you bought like a boxed figure, like carded figures like a Bumblebee wouldn't have it or like, like a dead end or Constructicon. But if you bought a boxed figure, it would come with this catalog and it would have on one side the Autobots and on the other side the Decepticons. So this is kind of like that. So on the back you have all the other regular Hankai figures that are available, uh, Optimus, Megatron, Megatron in his G1 colors, unlike the Nerf colors that we got here. And these all came with like chrome parts. So they were they were close to the ones we got domestically, but they had chrome parts. And it comes with a little comic book. Little little comic there. Somewhere between like regular comic and super deformed art, I guess. I thought this was a full catalog, but this is still cool nonetheless. It's adding something to the lore, which is what I like. Rather than just trying to uh, repeat something, well, I guess all Transformers are trying to repeat something because there's very few original characters now. Can I get this back in sideways? Sideways is also the name of the Transformer. There we go. You know, they try to make this fit as tight as possible. with this guy a little bit. I tend not to play with these figures. Um, you know, actually, this is the first Henkai Autobot I've ever opened. The second Henkai figure I've ever opened. First one, the first and only one has been Astro Train, which I got because he was in G1 Astro Train animated colors. So, got a lot of clear plastic. The black is translucent black. Guns chrome. Most of the weapons in all Henkai figures were chrome, so give an example. 
uh, thrust, you know, chrome weapons, and then the decals are also different on him. Uh, let's see, regular release, uh, Grimlock, look, the uh, neck part is chrome, and the feet are chrome. You know, I think this guy's begging to be open, but we've had so many, like, Grimlocks, like, new figure Grimlocks, that's like, eh. What's the point anymore? At least this is different. This is different from the Clear Mirage from Bakan. Because it's clear plastic, the plastic quality does feel extremely fragile. Ooh, feels like a, like prototype plastic, like that cheap ABS stuff. Um, the reason we didn't do the Bakan one from, I think it was 2006, Descent into, e no, it was uh, Wings of Honor, I think it was. The reason we didn't do that one in clear like this, originally we wanted this to be clear, like just like clear, clear for the Bakan one. We ended up doing it in clear blue. And the reason was because this plastic is very, very, very fragile and Hasbro did not want to produce it in this color plastic because it's so fragile. Like, I'm really just kind of nervous putting the weapon in there because I can feel that hand just wants to split in two. But there it is. There is the Takara Tomy 2009 Mail Away figure. Clear, uh, Electro Destructor Lieger, Lieger. Or is that? And while we're speaking of like fun things, let's talk about these. So the Chinese zodiac symbol. I was on the team that first developed uh, the Chinese Optimus Primes. It started. The first one was the year of the dragon. And we did the Dark of the Moon, Optimus Prime with the Trail with the Dragon on it. And I think the second one was the Year of the Horse. And we did Omega Supreme with that Energon Prime. Uh, so I, I worked on the first couple of these. I'm sorry to see that they didn't they didn't really continue it. Uh, they did, this is the Year of the Eighth. They did the Year of the Ghost, which was the Laser Optimus Prime from G2 in clear plastic. And then they did the, uh, it's not the Mega SCF, but it's the Micro G1 stylized uh, Convoy. Uh, that was the last one they did. That was really hard to get. And I think Big Bad Toy Store is the only place that, that has it in stock at all anymore. It's about 100, 150 bucks maybe. So it's a harder to get item. But these were intended to be for the Japanese market. For, I'm sorry, for the Chinese market, because China was such an emerging market at the time. And it still is. We really didn't intend to bring these over, but because they came out so cool, we thought, all right, well, maybe Toys R Us and want them, sure enough. They went to Toys R Us. Um, I didn't have a second one of these. I had, I had one originally when it came out. I think I got it. I think these were like 100 bucks when they came out. This. This is the um, Beast Machines Optimus Primal, which got canceled at the tail end of Beast Machines, ended up coming in R.I.D. packaging, the original Robots in Disguise in uh, 2000, 2000, I think it was 2001, this finally got released. And then here it is again. It didn't get reissued for Beast Wars Return, which was the Japanese release of Beast Machines. It did get an Encore version, but I think this came before the Encore version. So this is the second one I got. This this was actually at Ross. Look, compare. Originally, 150 bucks. Now it's like $20. So uh, I finally got a second one to open, thanks to Frank in California. Uh, let's see if it still works. So it kind of plays like a little riff of, I think that's the Beast Wars song. I, 
I don't know what that was. It had the transforming sound in the background. Does it say anything? So that sounds like the Beast Machines theme. A little roar, but it doesn't say anything. So this is the 2016 Year of the Monkey Optimus Primal. How fitting, Year of the Monkey. All right, this box is pretty beat, so I'm not even gonna pair it to the one I have on the shelf. We're, we're just gonna cut the tape. Uh, I will show you, it does have a nice uh, flap here that opens into a window box. Uh, it is sealed, but it already looks like it's, you know, it's seen better days. One of the first episodes we did on Cut the Tape was that Year of the Dragon Optimus. All right, we've got some instructions that are stuck in the box to the bottom flap. This one doesn't even say start and change, finish. This one just has numbers. One, two, three, four. It doesn't even say, hey, you're done. Lucky for me, I know how to transform this toy already. All right, now usually I would have my clippers, but because I had worked on the basement today, I can't find my clippers. But this, so that these ties, these aren't the metal ties, all right? These are actually paper ties, all right? This uh, was a big initiative of Hasbro about, it was about, I think publicly it was about going green and using, uh, renewable resources but this was actually just cheaper than the metal twist ties that came in this so but to the public you're like oh hey we're using uh you know recycled twist ties which is it's nice it's nice that they do that i don't think they do that anymore so when you walked into the hasbro office in Rhode Island, they'd have a little display and they'd have like a ball of, like a ball of twine, but it was a ball of, of this uh, material that you used to tie packages down. You can like go and touch it and had a little knife and you can go cut a piece off and take it with you for some reason. I, 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 I don't know. I guess maybe it wasn't for the employees as much as it was for like people visiting. I don't really know if the buyers from Toys R Us really care about what was used to tie the figures into the packaging. All right, let's talk about this packaging. I'm not happy about this. <laughs> this is always a fail for me. When you have a blister that's just loosely taped to the inside of a box, that is cheap, that's real annoying. Just have it sit there and you just take it out. There, is, there was really no need. Because of the size and shape of the box and the box that this slipped into, the slip case, there was no need to tape that. That is wasteful. Huh. So there, take that with your green initiatives and whatnots. All right, let us free you, monkey, from your... Oh, you know what? This is also our King Kong vs. Godzilla preview episode. Yeah, yeah, that's what this doubles as. So it's got a clear twist tie that looks like it was around the waist, or the chest. Seems a bit unnecessary. It's got twist ties here at the legs. Boy, you can just, you know, just from handling this figure, I know it's not that old, you know, this is from 2016, but originally this figure was produced in 2001, 2000. Uh, just by handling this figure, you can tell the parts count is different compared to a modern day toy, that the plastic is different compared to a modern day figure. You can just tell that this, this is sturdier this is way sturdier. This is more like the, 
This is more like a Captain America Optimus Primal. So it's Beast Machines Optimus Primal in a G1S color scheme for the year of the monkey. I don't know why it's in these colors. It looks like the, so I'm gonna do some research into this because originally for Beast Machines, when you press this, I believe, yeah, there were lights here in this part and also made like the, like he's blasting off sign. Oh, did you hear that? It was David, was that David K? David K played Megatron. Flip the chest around again, see if it does it again. That's not David Kay, that's someone who sounds like David Kay. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. That's. I wish I knew the story of how that came to be. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, Beast Machines was, was a unique toy line. If you look at the first few Beast Machines figures versus the ones that came out towards the tail end, you can tell that the aesthetic of the toy line changed drastically to be more in sync with the show. The original Beast Machines toys were just done off concept art. So they were expecting Nightwing to be the big breakout character, so they made an Ultra. One of the smallest characters, he was a little bat, they made him into an ultra-sized figure. So I'm still waiting one day for a small generation select Nightwing. But speaking of Nightwing, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You know what? Might as well. Don't go anywhere. No, I'm... Man, I can't get to it. Now is the time. I got it. Nope. No, I don't. No, I got it. All right. Woo! Nightwing. All right. You know what? Just to show you where conversation will lead you. I wasn't expecting to open this, but since we're talking Beast Machines and we have Optimus Primal here, this is a KO. This is basically a deluxe size Nightwing. I've had this for 20 years and I haven't opened it. It's got some really bad Beast Machines Cheeto art. On the back, it's got the Beast Wars Transmetals guys. <coughs> it's got Beast, War, uh, Beast Machines Optimus Primal there. This is, and it's got a little T-Rex looking guy. Nothing to do with Transformers. It looks like maybe that's Digimon or something. But this is, this is the, basically this is the ultra-sized toy shrunk down. And I've had this and I've just been waiting for the day to open it. And you know what? After 20 years, it's time to open them. Now all we need is Botanica. This is a this is a knockoff, so I'm not worried about the packaging. There he is! Oh my God, he is. You know what? This is pretty perfect. This this is the perfect scale. Ah, oh, look at that! This is the perfect scale. This is the perfect scale. 
If you use the Blast Prunch, Optimus Prime looks even better. Oh my god, you know what? So I was telling you I opened a third party toy earlier. I'm not gonna... It was an add-on set for a Combiner War figure. I was not very happy with it. So it looks like there are some changes from the Ultra version to this. Some minor changes. But, you know what, for a KO from 20 years ago, the face, that that's a tight paint job on the face. They did a, they did a good job with this. Like the plastic is, like the plastic is legit. Like, this doesn't feel like a KO. Uh, maybe it does. Yeah, I think it kind of does actually. This is really good, and it's perfect. Good. Th this wins. You won. You won. Knock off Nightwing, Beast Machines character that nobody will ever make a generation select of. You win the night. Prepare to be assimilated into my Beast Wars shelf. All right, all right. That's it. Let's cut the tape tonight. I think next week I'm going to do something uh, studio series compare it to the original movies. And um, if we're doing movies, hey, maybe we'll open this next year or next show. Whatever. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. Enjoy your weekend. Be nice to each other. Register to vote. Remember, it's never too late to cut the tape.